you all had a wonderful week. Last week I preached about the Bible. And I said, if someone doesn't agree with anything I say, we'll stand up here and explain it or retract it. Now last week I said, so what will God say to those people at the end? He will say, did you read my Bible? And I said, no. I wrote a letter of mercy, did you read it? I said, no. I sent you a letter inviting you to me. Did you open it? And I said, no. I never even broke the seal. And God would deserve to say it to me. You deserve hell. Now, deserve and what you get is two different things. You will not go to hell for not just reading your Bible. But in my opinion, God will say to me, I deserve it. So I hope that clears that up. But also, on one more point, just as your body weakens when we go without food, so our soul faints when we go without God's word. Neglecting regular time with God, the Bible, the scripture, will increase our struggle and battle with sin. So, even though we're not going to go to hell for not reading our Bible, it will help us battle sin. Okay, thank you. Now, people from the notices. You've got a little goodie bag for me. Morning to you all, especially to uh, Dave Ferrington coming along. <coughs> Take our service, and as you can see, he's brought his guitar with him. So, uh, that be part of the service, yes. Jam for the children, good to see you. And this evening, 6 pm, we've got a visit from Charles de Lacey. Some of you may know him, some of you may not. But uh, he's a bit different to his son, so uh, we come and see. This is probably normally the in the morning. And there are refreshments after the evening service. Tuesday, 7 pm, prayer meeting and Bible study. Wednesday, 6 pm, boys club. So it's got a TBC, but we'll decide that during the day. Friday, fab, fab on Friday. 11am to 1pm. We've got to see Sharon to know what might be going on in that event. And then in the evening, or 6.30pm, is Girls Brigade. The next Sunday, the 5th of November, should have had some puns ready there, should have had some puns 10.30am, it's a shoebox family service, followed by refreshments. And then 6pm in the evening, we're going to have the persecuted or persecution church reflections Sunday. And yes, shoeboxes, that means we would like our shoeboxes back next Sunday, if possible, please. Streets for prayer, Turbot Drive, Full Bad Street, and that's some new ones. Um, well, one of them is a bit fishy, aren't they? But, um, <laughs> and Twyford Avenue. <laughs> UEC Church, we remember prayers of one of the little Tottens. And missionary focus is good news for everyone. Just to, you may see by the where we can pick up your prayer letter, there's a little slip for Songs of Praise Sunday the evening. If you put your selections on there and you give them to me, please, and we'll try and arrange a program for a Songs of Praise evening next Sunday. And you might wonder what this. This goody bag is, but it's Carl came to our house now, I don't know which one. But it's for you may get some knocks on your door on, on Tuesday, being uh, the 30th or 31st, is it? Yeah. Sorry. Mm. 
Share the hope of Jesus on Tuesday. Please take as many bags of hope as you need. It contains a super book, book of hope, packet sweets, a leaflet about the children's clubs at our church. So, so you may get uh, children knocking on your doors, and if you want to give them something, there's something in there here for them. Well, they might get a surprise, but uh, <laughs> hopefully they and their parents can so share the story of, or a means of giving out the gospel in a simple way. Right, let's just pray for the offerings. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your day, for your goodness and your faithfulness and love to us. And as monetary gifts are given during the day, in the general box and the missionary box, as we say, may they be used well and wisely. May you bless them. And bless the givers also. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, good morning everybody, lovely to be with you and uh, thank you for those introductory things. Okay, we're going to stand and sit if you like uh, and sing number 50 which will come up on the thing I think. Okay, be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here and it would be a bit of a shame uh, if the Holy One wasn't here, wouldn't it? We're in church to worship God and to meet with him as well as meet with each other. So shall we sing this?
trick or treating and uh, it's that contrast isn't it between the darkness and the light and uh, Jesus described himself as the light of the world and uh, he also said to his disciples that you are the light of the world as well and uh, it's a little song it's called the light of the world there are lots of songs called that too. Rush the oppressor. 
into the night. One of the words. And the other song I'm going to sing is a song called Thank You. Um, and it's been written as so, though uh, somebody has a dream and they go to heaven. And, uh, well, it's quite a moving song actually. I like singing this song. I dreamed I went to heaven You were there with me You walked alone in the streets of God Beside the crystal sea Heard the angels singing
he mentions going to Spain. Whether he got there, I don't know, but he does mention it. And the journeys were packed with incidents. You wouldn't want to go on a, a holiday and come up with um, some of the things that happened to Paul. In 2 Corinthians 11, 24 to 26, it says this. It says this. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, <coughs> danger in the city, danger in the country, danger at sea, and danger from false believers. As we move on, Paul's journey is over. He's probably 60 years old or so, and he is in prison in Rome. Here he writes his final letter. It's the very last uh, thing he wrote that's in our Bibles. He addresses it to a young pastor called Timothy. Paul is facing execution for his faith and is chained, probably to a soldier, but he looks to the future, and although his race is almost run, his desire to encourage and instruct Timothy, he has that great desire to instruct and encourage Timothy. Let's see what he writes, and Sharon's going to read it for us. All right, it's 2 Timothy, one, uh, 2 Timothy 2, one, <laughs> sorry, 2 Timothy, <laughs> to ten, and it's on page one one nine five in Church Bible. <coughs> the appeal renewed. <coughs> you then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering, like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets, in <coughs> gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a, sh a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. Amen. Thank you. sections and we go through to that passage again. Um, okay. We're not quite there yet. Uh, yes, yeah, so from verse 2 it says, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people will also be qualified to teach others. So Paul is concerned that the message of the gospel is in prison, is in Rome's chamber, that the message of the gospel will go on, that it will flourish, and that Timothy will be part of that, and he will also help other people to spread the truth. And then he goes on in verse 3, and uh, it, it says this, Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Now, perhaps we can have that uh, picture up. And we'll look at that in a minute. 
Verse 3 says the uh, Christian life is like a war. This is because there are enemies who fight against it. All the followers of Christ must be prepared to suffer for what they believe. So Paul tells Timothy to join him and other Christians and take a share of the suffering. He must serve Christ as a good soldier fights with the army. But Christians do not fight against people, they fight against the forces of evil. A number of times in, in Paul's writings, uh, he refers to people as soldiers. In Philippians 2.25 he says this, but I think it necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker and fellow soldier. It's interesting, isn't it? That's how he perceives this man. He's, um, he's his brother, he's his co-worker and his fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you send to take care of my needs. And in Philemon, that little tiny book, he writes, also to Athia and our sister Archippus, our fellow soldier. So there's a guy called Archippus, that's what he called that, uh, and he is a fellow soldier. I wondered, um, and I put those up there because I, I thought, I, I wonder if uh, there's such a thing as uh, values for the British Army. And I was interested to find this is on their website. And uh, we've got them up there. And uh, just go down them. So this is a soldier in a modern day army. This is what they expect of the soldiers. How well they keep to it, I don't know, but anyway. Courage, doing and saying the right thing, not the easy thing. That's something to, for us as Christians to think about, isn't it? Doing and saying the right, uh, um, doing and saying the right thing, not the easy thing. And sometimes we're faced with situations and it would be much easier to, to negotiate them in a, in a different way. And yet we know what is right, we know what is truth, and we need to stick to that. Discipline, doing things properly and setting the right example. There has to be discipline, you know. God doesn't want things to be unruly. Respect for others. Treat others as you, you res expect to be treated. That's, um, that's biblical, isn't it? We're finding this in the, in the secular army, in the British army. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Jesus said that, didn't he? Integrity, being honest with yourself and your teammates. Integrity is a wonderful thing. I'm always impressed with people who I've come across who have complete integrity. You know that you can trust what they say. You know that you can trust them not to share things with other people that you told them in confidence and so forth. Loyalty, support the army and the teammates. And there's a loyalty we have to the Lord Jesus. There's a loyalty we have to God. But there's a loyalty that we can have within our own, own fellowships. We need that loyalty. And selfless commitment. The modern sort of statement. We said that in Victoria's time, that it makes, makes and mission first, me second. But that's what it says. So I thought, I thought if the British Army have got values, I wonder what the Salvation Army are up to. So the next one will tell us there. And they have values as well. Might be good to write down a list of your own values in line with Christian things. Salvation Army values. Boldness. Compassion. Passion. Respect. There's integrity again, and mutual accountability. Makes you think, doesn't it, really? Yes, we're not. We're all part of God's family, aren't we? Um, I did have uh, 
my early years were split between the Salvation Army, Army, uh, the Methodists, and uh, even Pentecostal. So I had a bit of a variety there. But uh, be bold. We, there's a chorus we used to sing: "Be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you." Compassion. Sometimes that's such an important thing, isn't it? And, and we. When we look at some of the things that are recorded in the Gospels about Jesus, Jesus sees the situation. He sees people in need. And what does the scripture say? It says he had compassion on them. Passion. Um, not kind of false passion, but a real passion for the things of God. That will show through. Um, respect. Respecting other other people, sometimes we uh, we might be good at talking and not very good at listening. It's said, isn't it, that we've got um, got two ears and one mouth, and that kind of says we should be doing a bit more listening and a little bit less speaking, really. Sometimes, and uh, respect for others. Sometimes people want to share something with us and all, all we're keen on is, is giving our views or our opinion or trying to help without really listening to, to what that person is trying to say. And uh, mutual accountability. There are times we saw where uh, Carl stood up the front this morning and, and what was mutual, I can't even say that, <laughs> mutually accountable what what he'd said in the, the previous service and that it, it's good to just be open before folk and uh, so forth anyway where did we go from there that's a soldier there's a lot there's there's plenty to think about isn't there in paul saying to timothy uh, that he, he needs to be like a soldier and that those kind of virtues and values uh, are unnecessary. Let me come on to uh, Peter, but that is a bit of the athlete. Now, I've known Pete for many, many, many years, and uh, he was always going on to do triathlons <coughs> and marathons and goodness knows what. In verse 5 it says this, Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. I'm going to uh, read you something that was in the, uh, I don't read the Daily Star, but uh, <laughs> it was in the Daily Star in uh, April this year. And uh, I'm sure people are identified with it. Not, not what, what was done, but uh, anyway. Headline, Marathon Cheats Caught Using Car During Race When She Ran Mile in Under Two Minutes. <laughs> a Scottish marathon runner has been thrown out of the 2023 GB Ultras race from Manchester to Liverpool, having completed two and a half miles by car with the matter referred to UK Athletics. The top Scottish athlete has been disqualified from a 50 mile ultra marathon after allegedly riding in the car for a section of the grueling race. Now, she's actually a lady called Josiah and she is a GP, so that, now here, here we're um, competing according to the rules. She achieved a podium finish of third place in this race at the start of uh, April, was subsequently thrown out of the competition after tracking show, she had travelled two and a half miles with the race by car. Um, and so it goes on. And at the bottom it says here, uh, figures show she hit a top speed of 35 miles an hour. Did, did, did you do that sort of speed, Peter? No, okay. <laughs> 35 miles an hour in the car, seven times faster than the 28 miles per hour in Saint Bolt, which you were Going 100 meters though. Um, a bronze medal has since been awarded to NHS podiatrist Mel Sykes, who later launched a terrain against her cheap competitor on Twitter. 
But what does Paul say to Timothy? He says, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. Paul's saying that life is like a race. Those who believe should train hard. They should accept the discipline of the Lord. This is so that they can do what he wants. But in this race, there's only, not only one winner. God promises the crown of life to all those who love and trust him to the end of their lives. And a couple of verses, James 1.12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And in Revelation 2, verse 10, it says this, Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you, your, uh, give you life as your victor's crown. And then we come on to the, the third one in verse 6. It says this, hard-working farmer. And uh, it is hard work being a farmer. I know we see all these wonderful tractors that drive themselves at night by sat navs and there's no block and that. But if you look at some of the programmes on television, you see how hard it is for farmers to, to make a living how they sort of uh, long for three lambs from each year and only get one, all these things. And uh, also growing crops, it, even if you've just got a little garden or an allotment, you know that uh, you only need to go on holiday for a couple of weeks and you have to come back and sort it all out, you know. Um, things can get overgrown so quickly. And uh, so a good farmer prepares the ground he sows the seed so to make sure the plants have enough water he has to clear the weeds then the harvest comes when he gathers the crops he has done all this work for the owner of the farm as his reward he should have the first share of the crop james says this be patient then brothers and sisters until the lord's coming See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for autumn and spring rains. And then there's a verse that gets quoted quite a lot, but it's a verse that we should actually take, well, we shouldn't take notice of all scripture, but we should take notice of this. In 1 Corinthians 3, 5 to 7, it says this, and Paul's saying this, What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted, that's Paul, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. And we have to remember that we, we play a part in perhaps leading somebody to Christ, or sharing something, or encouraging somebody. We play a part. But it's God that makes it all happen. So, I planted the seed, Paul said, a pious water, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. So, there's nothing there. But it's, it's emphasising that it's God that makes it grow. It's God that makes it happen. So, we come towards the end of this passage of scripture. Timothy is, is to think about the soldier, is to think about the athlete, is to think about the family. <coughs> and there's some kind of overlap between some of the things which each of those will do. You should learn the lessons that we can learn from each of them. They show how a Christian should live and work for the Lord. As Timothy thinks about these things, the Lord will help him understand. A soldier needs discipline to win the fight. His chief aim is to please his officer. Our chief aim should be to please the Lord. The athlete must train himself 
he is to win the race, and he must obey the rules. The farmer has to work hard if there is to be a good harvest. So Christians must have this kind of attitude to the task that the Lord has given them. And then the last verse, last um, three verses of that passage which Shannon read say this. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain salvation, that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Another little, little sentence right in the middle there, it, it says, uh, and we started off by saying, when Paul wrote this, he was in prison, he was chained um, to probably a, at least one soldier. He couldn't do anything much, but he wrote this letter to Timothy because he wanted Timothy to carry on bringing the message of the gospel and also helping other people to become teachers uh, of the gospel and the truth. And there is, Paul is chained physically and he's writing these words to Timothy and he says, but God's word is not chained. And if we don't remember anything else, um, that, that's a great phrase to get in your mind. God's word is not chained, it's the truth. It's free, and it's for each one of us. So, uh, thank you for listening to that. And uh, I'm sure Peter will be back in the condone, going part of the race in the car. But um, that helps us to remember the, uh, uh, the things that we must stick to the rules. We must have integrity. Um, before we sing our last hymn together, I'm going to sing another song. <clears throat> I normally bring my electric guitar and do a bit of picking, but I looked at the weather and thought, I don't want my hand to my food up all the time. You know, so I've got to have some guitar, but it's my look for it. And, uh, it, it's a little, a simple little country song that uh, kind of uh, says that I have a friend and uh, it's my forever friend. It's called My Forever Friend. It's really by a guy called Charlie Hansberg. <laughs>
far away apart across my friend I'm for you so if you'd like to meet him I don't know Finish our time together in a song that takes us back to uh, the army part of our son. And it's an army of ordinary people. speak to us by your Holy Spirit into our hearts Lord. help us to remember those things that we've said but not only remember them but act upon them as well and if there's anyone here who has yet not given their lives to you Lord that you are, you are not there for every friend at the moment we just pray that they may take that step to find you as the Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.